Hello, Christine. Yes, hello, Arthur. No, oh, how are you doing today? I'm all right. Fantastic. All right, all right well, let's get down to the, uh, what are your new questions and inquiries? Well, yes, my associates have spent the last few days, unfortunately, looking over the CWCIKI. What was it called again? Quickie. The Quickie, yes. They were overlooking it, and they came across a few more slightly less than appropriate things and they really wanted to get some clarification about those i yes. told them i contact you and get the straight and narrow answer right from the horse's mouth yes i will far away all right now that's not all i have i also have a few more sonnet you questions which are much more business oriented but let's get the horrible things out of the way first how does that sound yes that sounds very good all right well we're going to start off right with the biggest issue i think it's i'm going to call it the blue spike incident oh yes the uh yeah that was the uh one of my theoretical ex girlfriends who turned out to be a turned out to be a troll turned out to be an immature boy i have no idea whether he's alive or not whatever still alive I, but anyway aside from that um and i so i ended up making a drive all the way from here to cleveland ohio and uh, then I ended up with a. I ended up going to the address I was provided there, and uh, the and the and blue spike was not there at all. Just an old woman. And the house looked run down, nearly run down as well. That's just horrible. Why would someone do that? Uh, well, they're either bored, jealous, immature. What have you? All the stereo amongst the stereotypical reasons. I bet it was jealousy. All right. Now the next thing that falls into the same category is: Did he actually have you? Did you, I, did you, I need to know if you faked this or not? Did he actually have you insert broken pieces of your medallion into your rectum? Uh, unfortunately, that is true. That's just horrible. How could that happen? That's... I can't believe it. Oh, my God. Yeah, I believe I believe at that time my PlayStation Network account was being held hostage as well. If I remember correctly. Okay, okay. So he was holding your thing hostage. So you were just forced into a situation you didn't like. I can understand yeah. that. And then, I, and, then I, and then later on I finally realized that all the time I should have called Sony and actually had them patch, re, patch up the password and that would have fixed it. I would not have had to go through all that. So that's two, that's big lesson learned and ingrained into my memory against my will pretty much. Yes, it sounds horrible. I can't believe it myself. It, it hurts me to think that happened to you. But yeah. enough about that. Um, okay, we covered that. I'm glad we got that out of the way first and foremost. The um, the next thing is, um, it's not so much important, but they wanted to make sure because of, you know, animal rights activists and whatnot. Um, when your house burned down, which, by the way, I feel for you. It's a horrible thing to have happen to anybody. Yeah. E even though it wasn't the whole thing, thankfully. But still, um, there were rumors being passed around the quickie, as you called it, that one of your pets died. Uh, yes, one cat. His name was Scamper. The uh, cleaners found his body. He was hiding behind the toilet upstairs and died of smoke in inhalation. Oh, that's horrible. I, my yeah, heart goes well, out anyway, to you. Anyway, we buried his body in the backyard okay. and, uh, and had a moment of silence there and all that. No, it's a horrible way to lose a pet, but I understand that, you know, hopefully he didn't die painfully. Uh well, I wish I could have. Wish I'd known he was up there. I would have gotten him out when we were all getting out. But at least you're alive, and that's what matters. Yes. Now that we've covered that. I mean, I mean, we don't want the animal rights animal rights activists to come running forward and think that you didn't care enough. You just let the pet die. You know. Oh, uh, yeah, I did care, and for a while we had thought that he had gotten out, but we were not totally positive. But then. We finally came to closure after the cleaners found the body. So, oh, my other cat Lucy 
miss him very much. But so, and uh, recently we adopted a another male cat from the SPCA. So, well, it's always nice to adopt rather than get a new kitten. It's always nice to adopt. Yeah, I wanted to make sure it was an adult cat, though. I didn't want to go for a kitten at the time, and it was male. So, but yeah, he and Lucy are getting along fairly well. All right, now this is this is a slight business question, but um, on the quickie, it mentions something about you losing a job before from terrifying a small child. Uh, no, no, uh, yeah, but that yeah, that was uh, some that was nearly the beginning of the decade, uh, well, millennium. Uh, when I had when I was working at Wendy's for the few months. I did not terror. Uh, there was a child crying because the child was tired. I had nothing to do with making that child cry. I had nothing to do with it whatsoever. And when I and I was just happened to be at the table nearby, when as it was happening, and I went by there, and and I want and I wanted to help them be on their way. So I got so I offered to get them a lid for their baked potato they were having, and I got them a lid for their baked potato. So it, because it says on the quickie that it had something to do with Donald Duck. I tumble, I tumble out the table, children, what the Donald Duck was. <laughs> but yeah, that was not the case at that oh, time. That was pretty good. I like that. That's nice. That completely caught me off guard. <laughs> yes. That was funny. So we had nothing to do with that. But it's nice to know. I just still, you know, it's nice to see your voice acting is pretty impressive. Because I was actually going to ask you later on that, um, it, we'll save it for the end, though. Let's wait till we get near that first. Uh, yeah. uh, I think I think you mean that if I'm going to differentiate between my own voice and the voice assigned to you, yeah, there will be a slight difference. Oh, don't worry. I, I have an idea at the end that I'd, I'd just love for you to do. But we'll save it for the end when we get near that. Because after all, I want to get these questions punched out real quick, like, and then we can go on to a little business talk, and then I can share some more information with you. But first, uh, next question. I, this one is the last. Um, this is the last one from the quickie, and the rest of it's business associated wise, really. Um, this question is: it has something to do with your church. We don't want religious people coming after us, thinking you're anti-Semitic or you're atheist or something like that. I am none of those things. None of those things. So, it says on the quickie you were kicked out of your previous church. Um, yeah, that was, yeah, that was because the, uh, pa uh because my past friend Joshua Martinez, uh, sh uh, show, shared with the, uh, pastor of that church, about uh, my face, about my my. I'm not sure if it was my MySpace. Yeah, I think it was my MySpace page that I used to have. Um, yeah, I had uh, there were a few images of uh, women of uh, women on there at the time, and uh, yeah, he did not like that. And so he informed he informed me that I was not welcome to his to his church there. Okay. Okay. And so, so it's just a that, that was the uh, only matter. It had nothing to do with Semitism or whatever, all that. Nothing to do with any of that. And are you getting along with your current congregation? Yes. I'm, and I'm still welcome to the to my current church. I just have not been there in a long time. Well, it's understandable. Understandable. We don't make it every Sunday, after all. Yeah. Okay. That's that's like the last real, you know personal question in the sense of how deep we want to go into the quickie anything else is just based on you know everyday life like for example i have a few questions about uh impulse impulse is a, a club i believe yes it's a lgbtq club in charlottesville virginia open on fridays and saturday friday and saturday nights and do you go often uh, I have not been in a while, but I did go there about near every, about near every, near every Saturday night for a while. I was looking to meet more women. Ah, more women. It's a good place yes. to go. Yeah. 
So yeah, it's, it was it's, a good place. So technically, going to Impulse is an impulse for you. Ha! Uh, that's that's a fairly good play on words there. Um, not really, but it, I did, I realize I I give it a try after I figured myself out uh, the couple of, the few the couple of years ago. That was a lesbian trans woman. Okay. Okay. Because I saw that, and I don't think that's going to be a big deal with this show. After all, there's all kinds of there's all kinds of people involved with entertainment these days that are transsexual or lesbian or gay. It doesn't matter anymore. That's not a big thing. Right. Peter, don't worry uh, about that. Yeah, but I think uh, I do understand the uh, general question among which um, about the uh, group of women that usually went there really big and all that. Sort of like a name con, but. No, that was not the case, you see, because uh, I did not know all their names. Uh, the manager had slipped, I had taped a uh, piece of paper onto the uh, counter at the part, at the part of the side closest to the uh, stage. Yeah, he called them the quote-unquote itty-bitty titty per parade, something like that. I think the, ter uh, I think the terminology is itty-bitty titty committee. Yeah, that was it. But anyway, um, yeah, because I did not know their names, uh, that was just, I mean, I didn't, uh, it, was, it, it came to my mind, so that was just a offhand reference. Had nothing to do with my opinions or anything or what, or, or anything bad. It was just I was borrowing the term. Okay, all right, understandable. Hey, you can, we all say dumb things. Yeah. Okay. Last one, and then it's straight to Sonichu. It's going to be perfect. Um, I've noticed on the quickie, it mentions that every once in a while, you get gifts and donations from people, sometimes surprising, sometimes anticipated. Yes. Like yes. The, what kind of things do you get? I mean, exactly. I mean, I hope you're not getting, like, shoeboxes full of cat poop or, you know. Uh, no, no. Uh, no, that does not happen very often. Uh only one time, only one time, though, somebody had sent me a Tupperware full of horse manure, and we put that. In, and we put I'm that sorry, in the no, truck. no, that, we, you got to be kidding. That no, that's just wrong. Yeah, but anyway, I put that. Anyway, we put that in the trash immediately after we figured. I would hope so. Yeah. Okay, so like, but like, do you get money, or is it like, um, like useful household items, like soap or toilet paper, things like that? Uh, yeah, they have, yeah, especially after the uh, fire, we have received a few helpful items in in the in the mail. Uh, we have received much. We have see, received some monetary donations at around Christmas time, like um, one or two actual functional gift cards to be redeemed, but as but somebody uh, wanted to send me empty gift cards as a joke. No, that's just me. Yeah, but it's like uh, you know, I don't have to, I don't have to actually go out to be like, oh, I'm going to use the gift card. I don't know whether it's blank or not. But no, I I verify it to the uh, 800 number or the web address listed on there. Yeah, it's clever. Yeah. But I mean, it it, it bothers me that it bothers me only a little bit. It ticks me off. Only minorly, but I've gotten, I've pretty much, fairly much gotten used to that among the uh, other prank, bad thing, uh, gifts or let or hate mail, as to put it. And I just know to just overlook, just overlook that and be like, heck with it. Well, heck, I'd always look inside all of them just to make sure there's not a card inside it or something. Yeah. So, okay, I think that covers all of the in little tiny insequential questions. Now it's time for some straight-up business talk, and we're going to start right. right off great. You're going to love this. Um, there's talk about a game, but I can't go too far into it yet. But um, if there was a game, how would you like it to be? Would it be an adventure game? Would it be a platforming game, an RPG, a puzzle game? Uh, I think it'd be... I think it'd be uh bits of which, but I think it would mostly be traditional platforming. Okay. And uh, with and uh, with, uh, uh, I'd say inspired by the uh, 
by the past Sonic the Hedgehog games, but um, not not totally. It would be more more among uh, what I what I figure. You know, I mean, only inspired by, but not totally copying. I mean, it's not like Sonic could actually could naturally shoot lightning bolts at enemies. No, no, of course not, of course not. And if um if this did happen. Would the game follow the Sonichu story, like in the comics? Like, would you just recycle existing storylines? Or would you create uh, a brand new yeah. storyline just for the game? Yeah, I would definitely see... I would say initially among which, yes, based on what I've done so far. And then also introducing new elements and okay. arcs. Okay, okay. All right. So um, oh, another question is, uh, some of my associates have actually seen your videos with the Amiibos and stuff. And um, they notice you have a lot of them. Are you are you constantly making them, or do you just like move the same ones around a lot? Um, I mean, um, it's not like to make them all the time and then have them ready for distribution at once. Uh, no, it's that would sound that would be like totally kind of a waste there. And then I just have rooms full of figures that nobody had purchased. So yeah, you, no, just, may, you yeah, just make no, them to order. I, I, yeah, I do it as they as they come in. Okay, yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Much more especially, practical. Especially on the uncommon material figures for that I would use for the chip and the base. So, uh, how much do you usually make from your um, figurines and medallions? Ballparking for business. Uh, I'd say about. Um, I, I estimate around. I'd say about around ten dollars profit, but that's my that's just a guess off the top of my head. I've never really thought about it totally, but well, I mean, if I mean like in a total, like a like a single sum number, like if you took all the figurines, all the amiibos, all the medallions, all the comics you sold, how much do you think you've made in total? Uh, but yeah, uh, initially it did come up to like. Uh, over a th over a thousand over a thousand dollars, and I started making the sign shoe figures on and sold them on eBay. Okay, okay, so about a thousand dollars. All right. Um, if we were to buy the sonnet shoe name off of you, like the rights, how much would that be worth to you? Uh, I would have to totally be involved with every project. Oh, no, I understand that. I'm just saying, like, in the sense if you were going to sell the rights, but you could still be involved, like Stephen King. Right. Um, I'm not sure. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to estimate over a million. Over a million. So just like a straight million, 1.5, 2 mil? Yeah. That's not, okay, so that's a very small number. Most people go for 15 mil easy right off the top. Mm. Alright, well It's too late, you already said a million I don't, I don't know everything I'm just, and, uh, just messing still, with you, Chris, yeah. don't worry <laughs> That kind of stuff will come together in a congrat will come together in a meeting And there'll be a contract And there'll be a lawyer involved We wouldn't just throw it out there and just like give you one choice It'd be a lot of right. negotiation crap All kinds of bleh stuff Nothing important, really um, Now, here's, a, here's one question And it, it's a little bit about your mother, Barbara um, I know she's getting on in the years, and I'm not trying to say, you know, anything bad. But um, right. if this goes through, um, and you move, and you end up moving to London, um, are you going to are you going to be able to live by yourself if your mother passes? I would have. I would definitely need a lot, a lot of money in order for that to make me feel more secure. And I definitely would want my my future my sweetheart future wife oh, okay. to, uh, that's secure i want every i would feel a whole lot better everything's secure but initially i don't feel like i could do fair i don't think i could do fairly well initially financially and uh much else mentally emotionally by yeah. myself yeah she said sweetheart you have a girlfriend yeah no i still don't have one yet oh, i apologize i don't mean to pry Right. But other it, than that, um, so you'd be able to do something, but it's only under the uh, the aspect yeah, after, of having after, financial after security. I've, uh, 
after I feel much, after I've gotten, after I find and after I feel more emotionally, financially secure and everything. Okay, okay. All right. And uh, I remember earlier you said something about the, uh, the uh, forgetting the videos. I mean, I haven't made videos out of this. I just saved them as uh, audio files. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. If definitely. you want if copies, I, you, uh, I can yeah, get you I, copies, no problem. I'll just send them to you. But all I do is I share them with my uh, associates. I just play them in the meetings we have. Quite. Uh, but, I mean, yeah, I just, I would put that on my Facebook to, so, so everybody would be sure to hear the, uh, interview, hear the interview and all that, get the straight-up stories. And of course, of course. Um, all the good stuff. Now, I said I had an idea for you at the end of this, and I think it'd be perfect. It's a little two-in-one deal that I think my associates would absolutely fucking love. Hmm. Let's take your two amiibos, one for Sonichu and one for Christine, and uh, we'll get the camera on them, and you can show off your merchandise and show off a little bit of your voice acting at the same time. Oh. Okay, well, I mean, the difference between this and the uh, pitch, uh, Sancho would be a higher pitch compared to me. Okay, well, they just want they just want a really short thing, like just like I don't know, just a little bit of pantomime with the two characters. Mm-hmm. Just make them have a conversation with each other for like a minute, maybe even thirty seconds. Yeah, all right. Well, I will think about that. Take it under great consideration. Of course, of course. Not being forced to do anything, but it really pushed the thing. Now, before I go, as I said, I've covered everything we need to cover on this meeting. There are a few other projects that are being thrown on the table. After all, this is a this is an animation company. Then we've got shows coming in all the time. We've got we got another show that involves an actual hedgehog character, and I've got somebody competing with me to get this show made. It's been in works for years. And he's tried to. He's been promoting it like crazy himself. I got another guy who's trying to get some Generation Z show going. He's some celebrity named Hayden Black. He sounds like a fucking idiot. I don't know who he is, but he's got his show, and I'm trying to get yours on top of the heap. All right. All uh, right. Well, yeah. You can send me the. You can tell me. You can type it all out and send it to me in an email. I'll be able to understand it completely better then. Okay. But other than that, I think we've covered everything, Chris. This covers everything. Next time I call you, I will have an answer for you about where things are going to go. All right, good. I will thank thank you for the uh, interviews, and uh, I'll talk to you next time. Of course, Chris. Teen, take care. All right, take care. Bye-bye. Bye.